three root ninety six. Now, before we actually just look at the answer, I want to point out. I said this before, but I want to re-emphasize it. The word simplify, right? It's a bit of a means almost anything word. In different contexts, simplify means do different things. But I think most people looked at this and instinctively said, okay, if I can take something out of this 96, if I can take some square root out of there, then that will be simpler. And what is the square root that's been taken out in order to turn it into that? 16. 16. Because 96 is 6 times 16, so you take out the square root of 16, the square root of 16 four. is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Okay? But here's the important thing, right? The square root of 6, like even though this number at the front is bigger, having this guy be smaller is more valuable, right? Having the number under the square root is more valuable than having a small number here. And a perfect example of why is part B. Have a look. You can see here, um, we've got a line of working here, which is very, very helpful. Do you agree with that line of working? Yeah. Yeah? So you can see you've taken out square root of 9, and then you've taken out the square root of 16, which gives you these guys. But once you do that, once you make the third part of it as small as possible, only then can you identify when, actually, even though they look different, they really talk in the same language, and then you can simplify. Does that make sense? So that's why we say it's better to get this number as small as you possibly can. Just like if you had fractions. Um, think of an example. Thirty. You could add these without changing what these fractions look like. But clearly, it's simpler if we convert these to equivalent ones, where the denominator is a smaller number. Right? That's easier to work with, and it's the same deal with all of these. Right, let's have a look at question two. Uh, 3a plus 12, what do you think? Yeah. Yes? Now why is, um, I see why there's a 3a, but why is it 12? Where does that come from? Yeah, that 3 is being applied to everything inside the brackets. If I had more things in here, like a plus 4 plus x plus pi plus whatever you like, everything gets multiplied by 3, that's what the brackets are all about. Uh, okay, have a look here. Do we have... No, we don't have a line of working. So, before this line, the answer, what's the line you can put straight after this? What line would you put straight after it? Anyone want to hand up? I'll give you a clue. It starts with 1 minus. My boy, right? Yeah, Danielle, what do you think? Uh, 1 minus 2x plus 10. Okay, now you've got to be really careful here, right? We've got a 2 and a 5, and that does give you 10. But, it's not just a 2. It's a... And this is an easy mistake to make, which is why I've brought your attention to it. Uh, it's easy to just say, oh yeah, I know what to do with that. And you expand it just like this guy. So 2x plus 10 is a common mistake to make with this kind of question. But now you notice, actually, it's minus 2 times all of these things. So it should be 1. I'm going to put this down. Before this line, it's actually 1 minus 2x minus 10. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Does that equal minus 2x minus 9? I think it does, right? You're collecting like terms, the 1 and the minus 10, you can put them together, which is what you get here. Fantastic. All right. Now, last one. C squared plus 49. You square that, you get C squared. You square that, you get 49. What do you think? Now, I think it's actually missing a tiny thing on the end. Can someone suggest to me what is it missing? Any takers? Yeah, Jennifer. Shh. Yeah, okay. So this pair of numbers here, not only do they get squared independently on their own, those bits are right, but in addition to that, they actually interact with each other. Let me convince you, okay? Firstly, um, the thing you add on, it's 14C, in case you're wondering whether you got it right or not, okay? Um, C plus 7, or squared, that's shorthand, right? Because us, math us mathematicians, we love to be as concise as possible, but in longhand, it might be a bit easier to see. Maybe you want to write this down with me. C plus 7, or squared, that's the way I would read it, is C plus 7 times C plus 7. Do you agree? That's fine, right? Now, what you do with this is just like what you did with this, right? 
if you've got everything in the brackets, for example, this C applies to everything in here, but this 7 also applies to everything in here, right? So if I just go term by term, C times C, which is, which is exactly, oh, hello, which is exactly right. I really dislike it. Um, what else have we got here? C times 7. Okay, so I've done this one against both of those. So far, so good. But you can see I haven't talked about, not my fingers, that guy there. You see that? So I'm going to do the same thing with this guy on both of these. So, 7 times C. And now you can see where the 14C comes from. You see where it's come together? Plus 49. Do you agree? And then these two can left to be that. There's one other quick way that you can convince yourself. Some of you have seen this before. Um, C plus 7 all squared. We call it squared because you can draw it with a square, right? Let me just show you what C plus 7 all squared would look like. C plus 7. A C part and a 7 part. Is that okay? C part, 7 part. Like that. Do you agree that this picture is C plus 7 squared? Is that okay? Okay, where's C squared? Here. It's the big one over here. Where's 49? It's the little one over here. But of course you're missing 7C here and 7C here. Like that. Right? So that's why you always get this extra bit hanging around the end. You can tell with that? See what we've done? 